All right, guys, I'm going to walk through a basic enrollment, and also I'm going to cover the new consent and confirmation guidelines that we have to deal with going forward. These guidelines came out at the end of 2023. Um, they started to go in effect with business at the end of that year, but going forward 2024, this is what we have to do, and I'll show you how I collect it. All right, so let's get in here and we're gonna do a basic enrollment. Okay, so I'm on Hell Sherpa. I get on here and I run a quote. Okay, enter my data, perfect. Okay, now in my conversation with the insured, we're talking, I've collected their data. Maybe I already filled out my intake sheet. I have already got their docs and meds and I've already found them a plan that I think is best. Perfect. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add it to the cart. Okay. All right. So now once I've added it to the cart right here, where it says start application, when I click on that, in fact, before I click on start app and do a search, you must get consent. Okay. There is a form that CMS gave us as, to use as an example that gives, that tells the insured that giving us consent to do the application for, how long the consent lasts for, what we can do with their data. And uh, so you've got to collect that before you actually do the search, okay? So you can collect it. Uh, if you're sitting in front of them, you can get a wet signature on a permission, on that consent form. You can email it to them, all right? You can text it to them. You can use a digital signature like a DocuSign or Adobe Sign or you can collect it verbally on a recording, okay? Whatever you wanna do, okay? So what I do, because we can collect it via text, I use Agent CRM. That's the CRM that I recommend that you guys use and make sure you use my affiliate link because you get all of my workflows and this will be built into your version of the Agent CRM. So before I click on start, I tell my insurance, look, I have to get a consent. These are new rules, they're protections. Every agent should get this before they search you up, okay? So I go into my agent CRM, okay? And I make sure that their phone name and first name and last name is entered. I will make sure that their email is entered, their phone number, and I put their date of birth, okay? Marketing purposes. I have a workflow that you guys will have access to that when they turn 64 and a half, they let you know, which is beautiful. It's your internal leads for Medicare. All right. Then what I will do is I will click here, ask for ACA consent. Now you can get it in English or Spanish. You, and this is by text or you can email it. I will click SMS English. And down below, there's a save button. I'll save it. That's all that I've got to do. Then the system will send them this. Okay. It's a picture. It's sending it by text. And there is the consent form. They can open it up, review it. And then if they give me consent, I tell them to reply back with I consent. Beautiful. I've captured it here. Also within the CRM here in the notes section, the it'll be a timestamp activity. All right. Once I get consent, now I can proceed. Okay. So I'll continue. Uh, now I will enter their first name, last name, date of birth, and state. Uh, I have received permission because I just collected it, and I will search. Now what happens here, if there's an app forum, it will pop up. Okay, If there isn't, you'll create a new app. Now, the recommendation from healthcare.gov and CMS is don't create a bunch of another one. Is take the one that they have for that year and update it, okay? All right, so we'll go through the privacy. You can read this information to them. Check, check, continue. Who's applying for coverage? Now, in this section, guys, it is important. You can do this in one of two ways. This is one way. So let's say you got husband and wife. You put the husband here first, okay? Is he applying for coverage? This is a yes or no. Maybe the husband has that at work, but the wife doesn't. Okay, you, you still have to put everybody that's in the tax household. I like to do it here. 
So it's mom, dad, three kids. Perfect. I will add the husband here. I will add the spouse here and the kids here. Now, what if they tell me that the husband does wants insurance? Yes, he does. And I put no. The wife wants insurance. I just check the box. What if the kids don't want insurance because they have CHIP or Medicaid? Or maybe the, 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 the father has, you know, it's a divorce household and dad's providing insurance. Uh, so you can just put them in here if they're being claimed on the tax return by this household and check whether they want it or not. Okay, you hit add another person, you put their name, their date of birth and relationship. All right, then you hit continue, you go to the next screen. Now for every person that you entered, you're gonna enter their social. If they're not being insured, you don't have to, but I do, okay? Do they smoke? Are they a US citizen? Yes, if they're not, put no, and then they should have an eligible immigration status. So I'm gonna show you of an example what this looks like. So yes, we go next here. We enter the information on their green card. The A number is in the front. This card number is in the back. And then the expiration date. Okay. So here's some more information that you've got to add. Once you've done that, it'll come down here to ask you if they are incarcerated. No. If they're an in American Indian or Alaska Native, uh, it'll come up here and ask if they are of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin. Me personally, guys, I hate decline, decline. I don't want to answer these questions. They're optional. They have no bearing on the policy. It's more for statistics. So I don't want to ask them, what was so-and-so sex assigned at birth? I don't want to ask them that. Okay. What's so-and-so gender identity? How do they identify right now? What's their sexual orientation? I don't want to get into that. They're probably going to ask me why. So I just put decline to answer. It doesn't affect their insurance. Continue. Okay, and I will answer these questions. Um, has does the name name below match the name on the documents? Yes. Have they lived in the U.S.? So more questions here. I'll continue. Um, now we get in, and now you will have to do that for every person. Then you get into the income information. Fill out their income info here on deductions, guys. These are not their deductions like they're self-employed and they have lead costs or gas expenses. No, no, no. There's only a few deductions. I'm going by memory, but uh, student loan interest. I can't remember the one. I 99% of time put no here. Then you confirm their income. And now you go through the extra, you go through these extra help questions. Now, let's say that the system, when you quote it, states that they belong or that they can qualify for CHIP. And mom and dad tell you they don't qualify. We're not going to qualify. We don't want CHIP. What you have to do is here, where any of these people found not eligible for Medicaid or CHIP, you will check it, and you maybe you'll have the three kids listed here. So you'll find the kid that is so supposedly you found ineligible. You'll click it, and you'll put a date within the 90 days. Okay, more questions here. You continue, uh, you continue, continue, continue. Then you get to the finalize. Now, we are in the second half of the um, of the um, the new compliance prep that we have to do now. So what I do is I hit print and I save this as a PDF. So you will get a bunch of information here: their name, address. Uh, you will get the, everybody in the household and who's applying and the income, all the data that is important that generates the final numbers for your application. I save it as a PDF. I'll call it John Smith finalize or John Smith application. Then what I do is I go back to agent CRM and I will click down here where it says SMS. Down here at the bottom, there's a paper clip and I will attach, I will hit the paper clip and I'll go find wherever I saved that document. And then I'll grab it and then I'll grab it and I'll hit send and it sends it to them. Then I will go here where it says confirm application information. And I will check it and hit save again. Then it says in this text message, we're reaching the final stage of your app. Please take a moment to verify that all the information is correct and respond with 
And if everything is correct, respond with, I confirm. This is really a good thing, guys. I have made errors and they're like, oh, you forgot the apartment number. Or you, you know, you got the email wrong. Yeah. Again, very, very good uh, uh, finalization checkoff that you need to have. If they reply back with, I confirm, then you proceed. Read this off to your insured, proceed, proceed. And then now you can get to the submit screen where you'll type their name in and you'll type their name in here and you'll complete the enrollment. Then you will get this, guys. Now, you may not see this NPN override if you do not have an agency. If it's just you, well, you won't see this there. And then you'll have to uh, check with them and state that you maintain proof of the consent. And I go with here. I've already have proof of consent in my own records. And that's it, guys. That's a basic enrollment. Okay. All right. So giddy up. Start writing some business.